the meanwhile we have a very important management joining us that of chola mandalam investment uh, we would have so many questions for them the increase in credit offtake uh, in the cv sector the auto sector uh, as well how have collection efficiencies and asset quality been uh, well joining us now is the management uh, we have with us mr arul selvan executive vice president and cfo at chola mandalam uh, mr selvan thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, well you know the reason reason why we are calling you is that we are getting higher and higher price targets from uh, analysts uh, for fy22 people are ready to give you four and a half five times uh, there is a, a, a call of uh, 625 650 on the street on the share okay. so what you tell us about the future is going to be very valuable well first up is the cv cycle i mean are you noticing it as distinctly improving uh, are people asking for more loans Yes, uh, as you can see, uh, the numbers have been moving up uh, in the CV cycle, and as you would also know, <coughs> that uh, you know the replacement itself, had, which had been delayed by over two years, primarily initially starting with the uh, axle load increase, then following with um, you know the PS six implementation and the you know uh, the doubts about whether to buy or not buy. and then the big sledge hammer impact of the covid uh, but i think uh, this is a this is a product which has to be replaced at certain periodical intervals it can be delayed by a year or two and so the replacement cycle is surely going to kick in and we are we are uh, really um, you know gearing ourselves to capitalize on this uh, replacement cycle it's already started to happen february has been a good growth if you could see across all maybe except mahindra uh, in, in all the commercial vehicle segments has been a good growth uh, so we we will we will see a good uh, you know increase is what we expect okay so okay. uh, can you put some numbers uh, to that as well i mean uh, both on the the collection efficiency side where do you stand and since you are uh, looking at better growth ahead Uh, some sense on uh, the growth in the loan book that perhaps you can forecast for uh, FY22. Yeah, see, uh, what will happen is um, yeah, while disbursements will be very good uh, and it will show you know significant growth over uh, FY21 in FY22. Uh, what you will observe is that the AUM growth, that is the asset growth, will not be reflective of the same growth. This has got two reasons. One, I'm talking not only for Chola, but most for many of the other vehicle finance industries, uh, because you gave the moratorium. When we gave the moratorium last year, in spite of disbursement dropping, you would have observed that the AEM had been growing. So that is because without the rundown, the AEM had been, you know, more or less kept stable for almost six months. And on top of it, we had also capitalized a bit of the interest element on those uh, you know, moratorium period and the moratorium sense. So these two had an impact of, you know, sort of uh, not allowing the AM to run down. So now the AM will start running down, and it it will be more or less, or uh, you know, slightly better than the run down. It will be compensated by the fresh disbursements. So your AM growth may not look significantly higher, but uh, it is only a. Uh, this is like if you if you look from FI 19 versus FI uh, sorry FI 20 versus FI 22, you will see a good growth. You need to. you know accommodate this uh, moratorium impact or the moratorium's uh, you know uh, effect on the am moment thanks a lot uh, mr arul selvan you know we are always grappling with this why is mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know disbursals looking like 8.5% and why are uh, uh, you know aums looking like 15% in your previous numbers thanks uh, for preparing us for the eventual disbursals doing better than uh, aum uh, but uh, i said quality since you touched on moratorium uh, last time you, uh, your credit cost was about 2.5% right Uh, yeah. Are you more or less provided for, or do you think we are going to see credit cost as an issue? No, no, we uh, we are fully provided for. Uh, as a matter of fact, we expect progressively the collections to be more and more improving, better. Uh, we are seeing it on the ground. <clears throat> for example, uh, January was a good month, and even February, in spite of normally February because of lower number of days, will tend to have a slightly lower uh, collection. in absolute value because uh, the, the field teams can't work for uh, all the 30 31 days and from the 28 day month but we are we have more or less equaled or actually even marginally surpassed the january collection which is like a 31 day month 
so i think on the ground the, the earning potential of the customer is been more or less vindicated that they are improving and they are able to now service the loan comfortably so that is giving us the comfort and that we we are seeing reflected in our collection efficiencies okay. so what would the gnpa be uh say by the year end i think the last time you told us 2.5% to 2.57 no no see there are two things again you need to be uh, very off uh the, this again and I, sorry i'm not uh, taking the moratorium as an excuse for every question you throw at me uh, but the moratorium period we had pushed down the gnpa considerably because we took the opportunity to remove uh, to, to reduce all the Yeah. Overdue. Yeah. So okay. you would have seen if you observe from last December versus uh, you know even in June and in September our NPS dropped. Mm. You know considerably. Uh, I think we closed December this year. That is FI twenty with uh, around three point seven percent. Yes. And yes. if you look at March twenty, you would have seen that we were at around three point eight percent. I'm sure it will be better than these two numbers. Uh, while it will not be the 2.5, you are. Uh, oh, um, I am also sorry to say that I I don't know. You should have referred to the pro forma <laughs> number and uh, okay, including the uh, Supreme Court uh, and the moratorium numbers. It is 3.57, but your your 3.75. But uh, your point is that it's going to look better than that. Yes, yes. Sorry, I, I understood. You are referring to the Supreme Court number, but we are we never we that is more like one reporting number for us on the ground. It is anything which is more than ninety days is as good as an NPA. We need to work on it. I am talking about the factual okay. numbers, not the Supreme Court uh, decision decision based numbers. So, Mr. Selvam, I only have one final question for you, sir. Morgan Stanley is very, very upbeat on your business. In fact, uh, for our viewers, their target price is six twenty-five on the stock. Now, Morgan says that they're expecting you to end the current financial year, uh, which is just now, you know, a month away, with an ROE of eighteen percent, which would be highest in Morgan Stanley's coverage. Is that a, is that a fair estimate, Mr. Selvam? See, I, I also went through the report. Uh, I am not able to comment about that right now uh, because it is the current quarter's performance, and I'm not supposed to. I know, sort of. Uh, no, but in, in general, the the question is on the direction of ROE. We are going to do significantly better than last year, and we are on the right path. So we will, we will, we will do better. I, but I can't give you a fixed number or a, even an indicative number. Uh, I, I would request you to kindly hold for a month or okay. two before we get the results. <laughs> All right, we'll ask you after the results uh, or calculate it after the results. But uh, can you give us a direction of the margins because yields have moved up in the market? Uh, last time you reported a, a yes. fairly Sorry. decent growth in margins. I think seven point eight. You could do even better. So the margins uh, will be at the same similar levels. It will it may be marginally better. I'm conservatively. I'm I'm wanting to hold it there. The reason being, we are also now starting to capitalize on the heavy commercial vehicle. Uh, now the heavy commercial vehicle growth is coming. This is a yield, lower yield, but lower expenses and lower losses. So that's the way it works. We, when you have a wide portfolio which has got, you know, a larger band of uh, you know yields and a corresponding impact on the opex and the loan losses, you need to look at it together. So you will when you when we are. Scaling up the heavy commercial vehicles, the yield will slightly drop, and so the NIM may seem to be dropping. But you will see a significant higher benefit on the opex and the uh, loan losses because these products are low opex and low uh, loan losses. So, for example, if you do hire a quantum of two wheeler, you will get very good yield. But because of this lower ticket size, you need to do larger operational expenses because a lot of follow-ups, etc., is required. And two-wheeler being what it is, the expectation on the net credit losses on that will be marginally higher. So these two sort of offset, and you know you need to balance the portfolio to see you know how do you manage to get the total returns on a higher platform. Okay. This is what we constantly do. That's a great lesson in how to look at uh, a vehicle financier. In fact, at an NBFC. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arul Selvan, for joining us. So, expecting better than 
previous loan growth and uh, uh, lower than previous uh, GNPAs. What more can you ask for? We just take a quick look at the past financials uh, uh, of uh, Tolum Unlim Investment. You'll get have the gross NPS coming up for you, then the profit after tax. And uh, okay, we should have done the AUM first, but uh, okay, the AUM also comes up for you. Uh, I guess we got a very good explanation about uh, why AUMs are looking big and they will look bigger in FY21 as well. Okay, Anuj, uh, any update on the markets? Uh, they are now moving towards 15,000, but not quite got there. Not quite got there, and uh, that's you know always the risk, Lata, that you know.